If you want to go big, they don't come much larger than this. This is the Chevy Silverado HD 2500. We've got a big engine. We've got 10-speed Allison automatic transmission. We've got huge payloads, huge outputs. This could be possibly the ultimate tow vehicle in Australia. Let's have a closer look. The Chevy Silverado HD 2500 is facelifted for 2024 and it gets updates to the interior, exterior, powertrain, safety and technology. However, pricing does remain steady at $163,000 plus on-road costs. The 6.6-litre Duramax diesel V8 gets more power and torque this year with outputs of 350 kilowatts and 1,332 newton metres. No, that is not a typo. This runs through a 10-speed automatic transmission and part-time four-wheel drive system with an automatic locking function. This gives the Silverado HD more power and more torque than the 6.7-litre Cummins-powered Ram 2500. And it's also a longer vehicle with a larger wheelbase and it's at a lower price. There's also a low-range transfer case, auto-locking rear differential and off-road driving mode along with Rancho twin-tube shock absorbers and Z71 skid plates underneath. The main appeal of the Silverado HD 2500 is its towing prowess with all of that torque and you've got up to 4.5 tonnes of braked towing capacity provided that you have the right 70mm ball setup. And if this vehicle is NB2 certified, which needs a truck license, there is up to 1,386 kilos of payload available. But the reality is this Silverado is engineered to tow significantly more than this in its domestic market of America. And if you have the right kind of towing hardware, trailer and braking system, you can go even bigger in Australia. And this is evidenced by the gigantic gross combination mass of this vehicle. It's actually over 12 tons. Inside, the updated Silverado HD gets a 13.4 inch infotainment display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a load of handy towing technology. There's also a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster, heated and ventilated front seats with 10-way electric adjustment and memory for the driver, a heads-up display, heated rear outboard seats and leather trimming. There's room for five on board, not like six that you get in the Ram, but I've got to say there is no shortage of space and storage inside. So in terms of the comparison between a 1500 and a 2500, they are very, very different vehicles in terms of size, but also just in terms of how heavy duty they are. That is what HD means after all. And I just want to point out a few things here that help this car in terms of being a pretty awesome adventure vehicle. Number one are these side mirrors here. They are huge. They come out electrically. They've got a lot of vision going on as well. In terms of your blind spot, which helps with driving, we'll get to that a little bit later. I also like these massive side steps here. They almost look like wings on a fighter jet or something like that, but that gives you access up and into the tub. One thing to note, if you are towing, we do have diesel exhaust fluid here. That is AdBlue. Uh, you probably won't have to touch that too often if you're driving around and just getting the car serviced regularly, but if you're towing, you will get through that at a much faster rate. So one thing to keep in mind. We've got independent front suspension up front. It uses a torsion beam and then leaf springs in the rear. Big payloads in this car, like I said, but there's one thing I really like about this car up around the back here, and that is electric tailgate. I haven't seen this in a car before, and I'll just open this roller cover as well. Big car, huge tub. Well, it might look like a piece of heavy machinery on the outside, but the interior of this Silverado is surprisingly plush. Of course, it's huge. We've got a lot of width here. You can really see that in the size of the center console here, which, surprise, surprise, is massive on the inside. There's a couple of power outlets in there. There's also a wireless charging pad, two cup holders up front, a big storage bin for whatever you need, really, extra power outlets, and I think an important thing about this car, you're paying a lot of money for it, but it does feel quite premium on the inside here in terms of the switch gear in terms of the materials the build quality it does all feel really good there's a second glove box here in front of the passenger that is pretty handy for storing some things a lot of storage in the door bins and this infotainment display is also quite modern and new it's big you've got apple carplay you've got android auto there's a lot of stuff in this infotainment in terms of trailer technology which is really handy you can dial in 
different trailer profiles. There's lots of different cameras that are all really high quality. That helps when you're hitching up, trying to squeeze this big car into small spaces, all of that sort of thing. That all works well. And then you've got a digital cluster in front of you here, which does have a lot of information. I'll just move that steering column up there a little bit. You do have tilt and reach through the steering column. There's a bit of information there. It's nice and easy to use, but it does feel premium. So you're not just buying a big expensive tractor. This is a nice car to be in. Also, ergonomically, it's really nice. We've got a lot of electric adjustment here. There's pretty good under fire support, a lot of movement in a lot of different directions, heating and venting as well. So even if you had four tons hanging off the back, I don't think you'd feel too stressed spending lots of hours behind the wheel of this car. Now, before I jump into the second row of this Silverado, you can already see how big this vehicle is overall. But if you don't have people in the back here, you can pop these seats up and you've got a lot of storage actually underneath the seats here which is pretty handy to have i think you can also get these seats out of the way so they're not damaged and you can throw bigger cases in here obviously you've got a massive tub in the back as well but another little feature which is kind of cool storage in behind these seat backs here there's one on this side and one on the other you obviously can't get to it if someone's sitting there and i don't know i'm not sure what you're actually putting in there to be honest with you but handy to note anyway maybe a first aid kit or something like that now let's hop in. Bit of a step up, but once you're in, you can see how much space there is in terms of legroom. I am a little bit under six foot tall. I sit a little bit close to the steering wheel, but it's all elementary, right? I've got so much legroom here, it's it's actually not funny. There is a lot of space going on. A lot of headroom as well. There's a fair bit of space in this recess up here if you've got a big hat on or something like that. We've got air vents, we've got USB and USB-C power, heated outboard seats, and the seats themselves are quite recessed and comfortable. So I could spend a lot of time in here quite happily. The driver up front is definitely going to be comfortable, but so am I. If you had to spend a life on the road, I don't know if there's a better car to do it in than this. The Duramax engine, it's a legendary one in terms of big heavy duty diesels. It was originally co-developed between Isuzu and Chevrolet many years ago and Isuzu obviously they've got a lot of runs on the board in terms of developing torquey, reliable, durable diesel engines. This is now into its fifth generation, this model, and we do have more power and torque available. That comes from things like revised pistons, updated fuel injection systems, new turbochargers. There's a bit going on there to get that extra power and torque. But the engineers from Chevrolet told us that a lot of work went into the cooling system of this car. And they've got a test over there in the States where they test how much the car can handle and this came out with flying colors. They actually tested it with 20 tons of gross combination mass in total on 35 degree days, towing up a big steep hill. Now you pop the bonnet and have a look under there. The radiator is huge. The fan is massive as well. So it's just got a lot of cooling capability. And if you're towing big loads in arid, hard and hot situations, that is exactly what you need. So the engine, it's got loads of torque. It's got a lot of power as well. It doesn't really get up and go like a passenger car does, but it just feels unperturbed at all times. It's really low revving, really relaxed, and it's got a nice noisy burble as well, being a big 6.6 .6 liter V8. Now that's matched to a 10 speed automatic transmission. You might assume that that is a Ford Chevrolet collaboration 10 speed like you get in the 1500, you get in the Ford F-150, even the Ford Ranger has that 10 speed automatic, but no, that doesn't cut the mustard in this situation. We've got over 1300 newton meters of torque to handle. So this has an Allison 10 speed. Allison is a truck transmission company. They don't muck around with passenger cars and things like that. This is a really heavy duty setup. It feels pretty good to drive as well. It's not clunky. It doesn't really do much crazy in terms of how it drives. It's fairly similar, I think, to other passenger vehicles. 
holds its revs when it needs to when it goes down big hills it does hold the ratio as well just to help with a bit of engine braking you've also got an exhaust brake button there which works it's awesome but it also works quite well and what it does is it blocks the exhaust on the car which gives you effectively more engine braking which means when you're going down a really steep hill fully laden with a big caravan on the back you're not on your brakes as hard it's a really good feature to have for a towing vehicle because we've got independent front suspension in this 2500, it's surprisingly compliant to drive overall. It's a torsion beam setup, so it's certainly not the most sophisticated independent front suspension setup getting around, but it just gives you a bit of compliance, a little bit of steering feel, I think. It certainly has a truck-like ride in terms of just feeling a bit jiggly and stiff at times, but hey, this is a big rig at the end of the day, so you kind of need to take that. It just comes with the territory. We were able to do some towing with this Silverado on this first drive, and we had a 2.8 ton caravan hanging off the back of the vehicle. We were driving on some roads that were fairly tight and twisty and had some big bumps and wallows going on. So even though it's not the full capacity of this vehicle, it was a pretty good test. and. I mean, there's no replacement for displacement, they say, in terms of the torque this car gives. But I think as a tow vehicle, there's, there's no replacement for just sheer size and wheelbase as well. In terms of the car feeling really comfortable and capable as a tow vehicle. If you're not in the know with the numbers, if you want to tow a van that's, say, between three and three and a half tons, I would recommend you get a vehicle like this that actually has a four and a half ton brake towing capacity because that means you're not going to overload your vehicle inadvertently and be in trouble if something goes awry. It's got over 1300 newton meters, a fairly smooth shifting 10 speed automatic gearbox, good cameras, it's comfortable to drive. Yes, it's a little bit stiff, but that'll smooth out when you overload it. If I had to tow anything over three tons, this would be the choice for me. It's one thing to talk about here as well is the price. I mean, we're looking at a car that is over $160,000 before on-road costs, which sounds like a significant sum of money, but a Land Cruiser 300 series, that can cost up to 130 grand before on-road costs. A Land Rover Discovery or a Defender, they're well into the 100,000s as well. You might want to do GVM upgrades, GCM upgrades, you do have to spend a lot of money on a car to bring it up to snuff as a tow vehicle where this, 160 grand, it's a lot of money, but it's a lot of car and it's got a lot of engineered capability off the showroom floor. So yes, it might not be in some people's budgets, but for those that are lucky enough to have that sort of money, this is a pretty epic tow vehicle overall. Now we didn't get the chance to do a lot of off-roading in this Silverado. Naturally, it's not gonna be some kind of rock crawling beast. It's a really big vehicle with a long wheelbase, so your ramp over angle isn't particularly impressive, but you do get a low range transfer case. You do get an auto locking rear differential, which will definitely help in some situations. And you've also got an off-road driving mode with decent all-terrain tires. So this vehicle is probably more capable than you might expect, I think, being so big. But hey, if you get it bogged in sand and mud, this is gonna be a bit more bogged than other vehicles. Now, in terms of fuel economy, this 6.6 .6 litre diesel isn't gonna set the world on fire in that regard. We have seen an average of around 15 to 16 litres per 100 while driving around unladen, and then that number naturally goes up a bit when you start towing and using a bit of load in the vehicle. 15 or 16 for the size of the vehicle and the size of the engine. Yes, it's a big number, but it's probably in all reality not that bad. Well, you're paying a significant amount of money for this vehicle, but you're also getting a significant amount of vehicle with a lot of capability on offer. The big takeaway for me from this review is that, yes, it tows amazingly. You'd kind of know that by just looking at the vehicle, I think. The 2.8 ton caravan we had today, this engine and gearbox didn't break a sweat at all doing that. But even when it's not towing, this car is surprisingly not that hard to drive. It doesn't fully shrink around you, but it's comfortable, it's easy to drive, it rides well enough. Of course, it's a little bit stiff with massive payloads and capabilities, 
But if I had to daily drive this thing, as long as it fit in the car park and in the garage, it wouldn't be a bad place to be. Now, the only competitor really is the Ram 2500. That's got a 6.7 litre Cummins six cylinder diesel and similar payloads and capabilities overall. Now, I would sweat the details between those two, but for my money, this could be easily the best tow rig in Australia.